The ocean is calm, but beneath the still waters, tension runs deep. In the expanse of the West Philippine Sea, ships glide silently, radar masts scanning the horizon, and every movement, every signal, carries meaning. For the Philippine Navy, a quiet transformation is underway, one that could define its future for decades. At the center of that transformation lies a choice. The Navy stands at a crossroads, deciding how to complete its full frigate complement. Should it continue the proven path and upgrade the Miguel Malvar class design, or should it take a bold step forward with the more advanced Chungnam class frigate from South Korea? This is not just a technical decision, it is a question of strategy, capability, and readiness in an increasingly contested maritime region. For years, the Philippine Navy operated under constraints, aging hulls, hand-me-down ships, and limited modernization. But as regional dynamics shift, the importance of a capable naval force has never been clearer. The revised Armed Forces of the Philippines Modernization Program, or RAFPMP, was designed to change that. And it already has. The commissioning of the BRP Jose Rizal and BRP Antonio Luna marked the country's entry into the era of guided missile frigates. Yet even those vessels, modern as they were, were seen only as a beginning. They were stepping stones toward a more formidable fleet, a navy able to defend its archipelago, secure its sea lines, and contribute to collective regional defense. Now, that next step is the Frigate Full Complement Acquisition Project. Two ships that will round out the core of the Philippine Navy's surface combatant fleet. The Navy's planners want ships that can conduct multi-domain warfare, surface, air, and subsurface across vast maritime zones. The question is how far to go and how much to spend to get there. The first option lies close to home, the Miguel Malvar class. Built by Hyundai Heavy Industries, these frigates continue the lineage of the Jose Rizal class, but with key improvements. Each displaces around 3,200 tons, stretches roughly 118 meters long, and can sail over 4,000 nautical miles before refueling. They are powered for endurance, designed for 20 days at sea, and armed with a 76mm main gun, a close-in weapon system, surface-to-surface -surface missiles, torpedo tubes, and a 16-cell vertical launching system. On paper, these ships are well-balanced, sufficiently armed for peacetime patrol and limited conflict, yet affordable enough to produce in quantity. The advantages are clear. The Navy already knows this platform. The logistics chain, the training programs, and the integration systems are in place. That continuity reduces cost and risk. The learning curve is manageable, and delivery schedules are faster. For a fleet that urgently needs hulls in the water, the Malver class offers speed and practicality. But... Beneath the surface of those advantages, there is an unease. Critics argue that the Malvar, while modern, may already be falling behind. Compared to the next generation of frigates entering service in neighboring navies, the Malvar's limited displacement and moderate weapons fit could prove inadequate in a high-threat environment. It is a ship optimized for patrol, not for combat dominance. And as missile ranges extend and electronic warfare intensifies, the margin for capability gaps grow smaller, that brings us to the alternative. The Chungnam class frigate, also known as FFVX Batch 3rd, of the Republic of Korea Navy. At first glance, it's a different beast altogether. Larger, more heavily armed, and designed with advanced sensors and propulsion systems. The Chungnam displaces roughly 3,600 tons standard and over 4,300 at full load. It is longer, broader, and faster, capable of reaching 30 knots through a combined diesel, electric, and gas turbine propulsion system. Its integrated sensor mast houses active electronically scanned array radars that provide 360 degree coverage, improving both detection and reaction times. In terms of weapons, the Chungnam carries 16 Korean vertical launch cells capable of firing short range surface to air missiles, anti submarine rockets, and even land attack weapons. It mounts the 5-inch MK-45 main gun, the same weapon used on American destroyers, and it carries advanced close-in defenses, like the CIWS-2 system. In every respect, firepower, sensors, speed, and survivability, it outclasses the Malvar. If the Philippine Navy were to select the Chungnam class, it would be a leap forward. It would place the fleet closer to regional standards, comparable in many ways to the newest frigates fielded by South Korea, Japan, and Australia. Yet every leap carries risk. With greater capability comes greater cost, financially, logistically, and operationally. The Chungnam is complex. It demands advanced training, sophisticated maintenance, and robust supply chains. 
Integrating its systems with existing command and control architecture would require time, and time is something the Philippines cannot easily spare. The budget tells part of the story. Reports suggest the full complement project for two frigates is valued at around 42 billion pesos, roughly 750 million US dollars. That equates to about three to 400 million per ship, depending on configuration. The Malvar class, by contrast, was contracted at roughly 12 and a half billion pesos per unit, closer to 250 million US dollars. The difference is significant, and when one factors in lifetime operating costs, the financial gap widens further. But cost is not the only metric. A cheaper ship delivered sooner is useful only if it remains relevant when the strategic environment changes. And that environment is changing fast. The West Philippine Sea is now one of the most surveilled and contested maritime zones on Earth. The deployment of long-range missiles, aircraft, and sophisticated naval sensors by regional powers raises the threshold of capability required to operate safely there. For the Philippine Navy to project credible presence and deterrence, its ships must not just float, they must fight and survive. The Malvar class can perform those missions today, but will it still be effective 10 or 15 years from now? That's the concern driving proponents of the Chungnam option. They argue that if the Navy commits now to a more capable platform, it ensures long-term relevance. The higher cost, in their view, is an investment in deterrence and sovereignty. There are also operational benefits. The Chungnam's improved radar and fire control systems allow simultaneous engagement of multiple aerial and surface targets. Its longer range and endurance extend operational reach across the country's western seaboard, and its codlog propulsion enables quieter anti-submarine operations, giving it a stealth advantage in contested waters. Still, others caution against overreach. A sophisticated frigate that spends more time docked for maintenance or awaiting spare parts contributes little to deterrence. Sustainment is as critical as acquisition. The Philippine Navy's support infrastructure remains modest, and training pipelines for advanced electronic and propulsion systems are still being built. A fleet too advanced for its support system risks operational paralysis. The decision, then, is not simply between two ships, it's between two philosophies. One favors incremental, steady progress, modernization in measured steps that match current capacity. The other advocates a leap, embracing higher capability and accepting the challenges that come with it. Both have merit, both carry risk. Let's imagine the implications of each path if the Navy proceeds with upgraded Malvar class frigates. It could have both ships delivered and operational by 2026. They would immediately strengthen presence missions in the West Philippine Sea, escort humanitarian operations, and support joint patrols with allied navies. They would integrate seamlessly with existing logistics and training systems. The fleet would reach its planned complement faster, giving the Philippines a stronger near-term posture. But in that scenario, the Navy may find itself facing the same question again in the next decade. How to keep pace with neighbors fielding more advanced multi-mission frigates and destroyers. The Malvar might need upgrades sooner, and its limited displacement could restrict future weapon or sensor additions. Now consider the alternative. Suppose the Navy opts for the Chung Nam class. Delivery might take longer, perhaps into 2027, but when they arrive, those ships would represent a genuine leap in capability. They would be able to conduct high-end anti-air and anti-submarine missions, operate seamlessly in multinational task forces, and serve as flagships in joint exercises. They would be future-proof for upgrades, ready to integrate emerging missile systems, electronic warfare suites, and unmanned platforms. But they would also demand greater funding, more complex training, and expanded maintenance facilities. The challenge, therefore, is balancing urgency with ambition. The Philippine Navy cannot afford to stand still, yet it must ensure that every new asset is fully operational, crude, and sustainable. Acquiring ships faster than the institution can absorb them risks hollow capability. A fleet impressive on paper, but limited in practice. Some analysts suggest a compromise. Proceed with two Malvar class ships now to meet immediate operational needs, while laying the groundwork for a future Chung Nam class or similar platform later in the decade. This hybrid approach provides both near-term strength and long-term growth. Others argue that splitting focus weakens momentum, and that decisive investment in one direction would yield better results. Whichever path is chosen, one truth remains. The Philippines is an archipelagic nation whose lifelines run through the sea. 90% of its trade passes through maritime routes. The security of its people and its economy depends on control of those waters. Frigates are more than weapons platforms. They are symbols of sovereignty, 
tools of diplomacy, and shields of national interest. When a Philippine Navy ship sails into contested waters, it carries not only missiles and sensors, but the message that the nation intends to defend what is its own. Every radar ping, every patrol is an assertion of presence. And the kind of ship that performs those missions shapes how that message is received. A modest frigate signals commitment. A fully armed modern one signals capability. There are also regional implications. A stronger Philippine Navy contributes to collective security in the Indo-Pacific. It enhances interoperability with allies such as the United States, Japan, and Australia. Exercises like Balikatan and Samasama benefit when partner nations field compatible platforms. A Chungnam-class frigate, with its advanced sensors and communication links, could integrate more effectively in such multinational task forces. That interoperability brings strategic weight, extending beyond the numbers on a balance sheet. Yet modernization is not just about technology, it is about people. The sailors who will crew these ships are the true core of capability. Whether on a Malvar or a Chungnam, their skill, discipline, and readiness will determine how effective these vessels truly are. Modernization programs must therefore invest equally.